the, against the, the worst scourge the planet has faced since old Adolf and his minions marched to the horse vessel song. The conservative intellectuals, where are they? There are almost none. The, f the sad truth is that some of the most brilliant minds of our time are falsely political progressives. Don't confuse yourself and assume that they're progressives because they're stupid or that with the glib tongue they're all low-information voters. Many of these people would rather be nice and kind than right. They may even know that their politics are wrong, but they'd rather err on the side of kindness, which leads me to the next point. Hatred is not a philosophy. And I'm asking you again, who are the conservative creators, the conservative intellectuals other than me? Yes, I'll put myself in the top echelon. I am so sick and tired of pretending that we're all the same. We're not all the same. It takes more than hatred to make a movement. It takes more than every day false righteous indignation to make a point. Give me a break from all these multi-millionaire talk show hosts who don't give 10 cents to charity, screaming about the little guy who's hurting, or falsely complaining about the economy that's dying as they build beachfront mansions built on the swamp of hate and deceit. And I'll reiterate that I've given money away for years to deserving Marines who were facing court-martials they didn't deserve. I donated $20,000 for a van to Brent Gromit and Matt so they'd have a car to drive, and $100,000 in scholarships to deserving college students, five $20,000 scholarships. And so we need propaganda. We don't need aggregators. That's, don't, don't confuse aggregators of news stories with conservative creators. Don't confuse aggregators of news stories with talkers who have an intellect. Please don't make the confusion. There are some good nonfiction books out there that are on the conservative side. I've written many of them. Well, they're okay. How many conservatives have written fiction, such as I have just done, with the masterpiece Countdown to Mecca, in order to broaden the appeal of my viewpoint? Can you name one conservative filmmaker? Can you name one conservative poet? Can you name one conservative musician? Can you name one conservative painter? Who? It takes more than hatred to make a movement. It takes more than screaming every day about how bad everything is in order to make a movement, which is why so many people and some of the most brilliant minds of our time are falsely political progressives. They'd rather be nice than right. That opens the show. The phone number is 855-407-282. As we go on, I'm going to talk about maligning the enemy and how we must use the power of propaganda to build a prejudice against the Islamo-fascists in order to beat them at their own game. Propaganda was used in World War II to smear the Japanese and to smear the Germans. It invigorated our troops. Was it pretty? No, it was pretty ugly. Was it stereotypical? Yes, it was. Did it help the troops fear a feel that they can defeat the enemy? Yes, it did. But right now, our troops have nothing to go on other than a hatred for themselves. If they're white, they're being indoctrinated by goons in the military who tell them they have white privilege. If they're straight and Christian, they're being indoctrinated by vermin in the military who are telling them that straight and Christian is evil. So everything is upside down. The left is everywhere with their propaganda, and we on the conservative side are nowhere with effective propaganda. I'll be right back. Savage. British professor Hubert Lamb says that a new ice age is creeping over the northern hemisphere. Even then, it won't be as bad as the last ice age 60,000 years ago. Then New York, Cincinnati, St. Louis were under 5,000 feet of ice. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. <clears throat> I'm talking about propaganda today, and back in the 70s, the propaganda was the coming ice age. The propaganda now is the coming hot age. Both are lies. Both are frauds. Both were built, built on houses of fraudulent science. In the world of politics, the world is not much different. Both sides use lies. However, the progressives are winning because they use lies more effectively. They're better artists, better writers, better creators, and, frankly, they own the studios. Katzenberg, Geffen, uh, uh, how many of them are actively involved in making movies anymore? They're too big to make movies. But they run the show. Nothing happens, in my estimation, unless 
the Caesars of Hollywood give a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up operation all the way down the line. And so you never see a movie where an Arab is a villain. You never see a movie where you see what ISIS is doing to Christians burning churches. When have you last seen a movie showing a church burning produced by Harvey Weinstein? Never. I haven't seen Weinstein produce a movie showing a church on fire with Christians being killed. When have you last seen a Katzenberg production, if he's still producing movies, where you see young Yazidi girls raped eight years of age, raped by Muslims? You haven't seen such a movie. Why not? I don't know why not. These are brilliant men. They're geniuses. Don't they run the world? Aren't they invited into the White House on a regular basis? Don't they rub shoulders with such esteemed American citizens, such as Al Sharpton? And so we're talking today about propaganda and why we need propaganda to win not only against our socialist enemy, but against the ISIS enemy, which is our collective enemy. And I am clear in saying that we have no, no real group of conservative intellectuals that I know of, and that some of the most brilliant minds of our time are falsely political progressives. Some of them know exactly what they're doing, and they know that they're living a lie, but they don't care. They don't care because they won't work in Hollywood unless they work the party line. They don't care in some cases because they'd rather be invited uh, out to social gatherings than live alone and be in isolation. And then some of them would rather be nice than right. So where are the conservative intellectuals? I don't mean aggregators of news stories. I don't mean people who put together uh, uh, put together uh, nonfiction books. I've done that. Nothing wrong with it. It's a very hard job to do it right and make people have something they can really read. How many conservatives have written a novel, as I have, in Countdown to Mecca, the third in the trilogy? You can count them on one hand, if that many. How many films have been made which have a conservative orientation? Where is there a, a, a conservative poet who has been invited to a university to read her poetry? Nowhere. Where is there a musician playing a patriotic theme? Nowhere. Where is there an artist painting patriotic paintings? Nowhere. You see, it takes more than hatred to make a movement. It takes more than false righteous indignation to have an audience that follows you devoutly. The fact of the matter is we can build a movement on the swamp of hatred and deceit. And so I come before you today in the show to talk about the fact that we have to malign the enemy to defeat the enemy. Just as was done by this nation in World War II, they were maligning the enemy on a daily basis. They maligned the Japanese. They maligned the Germans. They used naked propaganda. They made them into villains. Now, now every German couldn't have been a villain. Every Japanese soldier couldn't have been a villain. Many of them were, by the way. If you looked at the behavior of the Japanese soldier, many of them were villains. And if you don't believe me, then... Research the rape of Nanking, and you'll see what the average soldier in Japan was was capable of. Before we get off on the high horse of we interned them here in America, that's all I got to hear about. I'm sorry about the internment. I didn't do it. FDR did it, the, 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 the role model for Obama. Maybe he's planning on an internment here of uh, his enemies under the guise of a war. Who knows? Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Posted the Daily Mail article of ISIS vermin taking young girls to rape them away from their mothers and fathers as the mothers and fathers and the girls are screaming. You can't even listen to the screams. People are not believing this is real. Someone smuggled this out from one of the ISIS strongholds. They're dragging these young girls away. The girl, one of them escaped and tells what happened to her. They then shot their fathers. We know where they are and we don't kill them. 
that fraud of a president of ours dashes off to go surfing in Hawaii and lets this go on, makes believe he's a champion of the downtrodden, and Hillary, that Harridan, says nothing about this, making believe she's a champion of women? And that comes right to why Trump is popular, even amongst constituencies that you would not think would support him. Even in, amongst African Americans, there's a huge support for Trump, and I will tell you why. The African American community, in my opinion, has been lied to so often and for so long that even if they disagree with the man's policies to a certain extent, they'd rather have a, a truth teller than a liar. They know Hillary's a liar through and through. They know what they're going to get with her. They don't like her. So they like Trump. They like strength and they like truth. They don't care even if his policies disagree with theirs. At least they know he'll tell it like it is. That's number one. Why are Hispanics, so many Hispanics, in favor of Trump? I'll tell you why. You have to understand, you want to call it the Latino culture, you can't even though that's not the proper word. We'll use it for the sake of identity. The Latino culture is a male-oriented culture. It's extremely macho. Do I have to say any more? Is there a more alpha macho candidate than Donald Trump? He appeals to the Latino male because he is macho. They like strength. They like leadership. They want a man running America, not a deceptive liar. They don't want a snake running America like Obama. They see what the snake is. They know the snake has done nothing for the Latino community except threaten the Latino community by flooding America with millions of undocumented aliens who threaten who the most? Who do these undocumented Hispanics uh, threaten the most? The Hispanics who are already here, many of whom are on the bottom of the social ladder. And who is being hurt more by the illegal aliens from south of the border uh, than anyone? The African American community. The social welfare funds that should be going to the poorest of the poor is being diverted to illegal aliens from third world nations. They know what's going on, and they know that Trump will actually be good for them financially as well as every other way. That's my analysis. You can take that to the bank. I'm Michael Savage. You can take that to the bank because it's the best analysis of why minorities like Trump and why he's going to win. So there are two groups that you would think would be natural allies of the Democrat socialist machine, but they're not. And they're, they're moving, according to polls I've seen, over to the Trump side. And this is much to the consternation of the, of the wonderful people, the truth tellers in the media, all the people that you've trusted for all these years to tell you exactly what's going on. All of the independent men, the Jake Tappers, the Wolf Blitzers, that type, you know, the type you've come to trust to tell you the truth. You see, it's giving them a lot of trouble because they know that they're supposed to get Hillary elected at all costs. And they're failing. Oh, they're failing at the end of the day. Their, their jobs are on the line. If they can't deliver the goods, what good are they? I mean, if you want to work for the Politburo and you want to be a member of Pravda after their, the Politburo candidate is selected and you haven't gotten that Politburo candidate elected, you're going to be cast into Siberia. The next thing you know, you might be teaching journalism at a school in Arkansas, an unaccredited school in Arkansas. Talk about the realities of what we're living through here. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. But, of course, it makes sense why Trump is rising. Trump is rising because he's the only one ever talked about the threat that Muslim immigration poses to our society. And yet Hillary Clinton, the demagogue liar, says anybody who says one word about the threat that Muslim immigration poses to our society is a homo is a, an Islamophobe, a thisophobe, a thatophobe. Why is the gay community silent on this? This is something that perplexes me. How are gays treated in fundamentalist Muslim societies? Why is the gay community dumb and silent on this? Why is the female of our species silent on this when women are treated worse than garbage? Why? How does Hillary get away with silence on this? I ask myself these questions and for which there is no answer. None. Instead, she attacks Trump. Instead of attacking those who are raping girls in the Middle East, she attacks Trump. Somalia cancels Christmas because it threatens Islamic culture. You hear this? Any country where there is a Muslim majority, there is persecution of other religions. Now, right now, the Muslims are in a minority in America. But they're moving up. Do you know what happened in this country right after the Muslim massacre in San Bernardino? The Muslim group, I forget the name of this one, one of the uh, front groups, a U.S. Muslim group announced a campaign to not 
root out and seek out jihadis in America, but to fight Islamophobia after the slaughter. They're very clever, haven't they? They learned the game in America. They learned it from Jesse Jackson. They learned it from Al Sharpton. They learned it from Black Lives Matter. They learned to keep 